The Crockett connection with Kukubri is found in a number of stories, with the town often fictionalised by him as Creelport. Crockett tended to change the names of both places and characters in his fiction, much as Thomas Hardy did with his creation of Wessex. This has led to an amount of confusion over the years, but once you know the key to Crockett's fictional landscape, you can explore the deep connection between him and Galloway, which I think is one of the greatest pleasures to be found in his fiction. Crockett's friendship with McGeorge, along with his relationship with many of the Kukubri artists, is fictionalised in a full-length novel, Little Essen, published in 1907. It is set largely in the town during Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee year of 1897. As I understand it, by this time relationships between Hornell and McGeorge, and possibly Crockett, were soured, and the novel is intriguing in the terms it describes the artists, though I don't know enough about them to firmly attribute real names to the fictional characters. Being Crockett, it's quite likely that he conflated characteristics of several of his artist friends. But the hero of the story is unmistakably William McGeorge, who's treated with the kind of humour only a close friend could get away with. Above all, I think Little Lesson shows that drawing too close parallels between fact and fiction is a dangerous thing. If you read it, and I hope you will, you may be able to draw your own conclusions. For now, I'll simply draw an outline. The heroine is Minor Hillard, and the fictional artists, her brother, Jerome Hilliard, Gl- John Glen Cairn, Fuzzy Wells, Hunter Main, Terry Fairweather, and of course Little Essen himself. The story opens with Minor Hillard, a victim of domestic abuse, throwing herself on the mercy of the boys at the artist's studio by declaring she will marry the first of them who asks her, rather than return to face her father's raised hand again. She has been posing for the artists and is described as... Daughter of Claude Hilliard, Esquire, decayed gentleman and art connoisseur, and sister to Jerome Hilliard, also Esquire, painter in oil colours rejected at many exhibitions. In Little Lesson, you have to take the plot with a pinch of salt. However bohemian the life of an artist might have been in Kukubri in the 1890s, the poisonings and shenanigans going on in the story are not reflective of real life. That said, descriptions of the other main characters allow for lots of speculation. We have Terry Fairweather, the son of a rich contractor, who, as his last and most permanent work, had recently bridged the sticks. Slender, delicate, graceful was Terence Fairweather, his cheekbones touched with a too vivid red, at once the butt of the painter's camp, and also, in some degree, its providence. Usually, Terry sat quietly in the background, a cigarette drooping from his fingers, listening to the heated talk of the other men. There's John Lancairn, described as the dogmatist who knew how everything ought to be done and was always willing to tell his comrades of it without ever being able to finish so much as a sketch himself. There's Fuzzy Wells, the animal painter, who never spoke except when he had a brush or a pencil in his hand when he talked incessantly whether anyone was present to listen or not. And there's Hunter Main, who is lord and lawgiver of the little commonwealth of Pitch and Toss, with a studio of his own, money, success and already a name among the dealers perhaps too early and easily won. And finally, the title character, the fictional MacGeorge, Essen the genius, watercolourist, already the member of one of the Royal Societies and full on the road to fame. Little, however, and plain, a dreamer of dreams, over whom, for the most part, women's eyes passed, going further to fare worse. Which of these characters may be Hornell is open for debate, but most likely Crockett drew together various aspects and thus allowed himself to mock the fictional artists as follows. Artists, a beggarly set. Every one of them is sponging on Terence. Your own brother wins his money at cards and borrows it when he can't. It's a lie, said Mina, hot for the first time. My brother can sell all the pictures he paints. Paints, said Hilda, shrugging her thin shoulders. Why, it's little Archie Essen that goes over them out of pity. Your brother only unloads paint onto the canvas. And as to selling them, you have never been in the garret room of Terry's house. Why, it's stuffed with their pictures, just stuffed. He buys them out of the exhibitions. He writes to the secretary as Mr Smith and offers a price. And the next thing you know, there's a red star on the frame and the daub is sold. Yes, S-O-L-D. But it is Terry all the time who is sold. Yes, Terry, my cousin. Except little Archie Essen and one or two of your precious Hunter Mains. There has not been a picture honestly sold out of Creelport for half a dozen years. I know if you don't. Ask Terry in the morning if it's not true. 
The villain of the piece here, who seems to have some of Hornell's characteristics, is described in more detail as follows. Hunter Maine was born in Creelport and went abroad to Rome, Paris and Antwerp with Jerome Hilliard, returning with medals galore to found the Creelport School of Landscapists, a number of enthusiastic impressionists whose works needed to be viewed from a considerable distance in order to ascertain the subject, but whose colour was, without doubt, something very remarkable. Perhaps those with a greater knowledge of Horner will be able to read into Little Essen with more accuracy than I can. I know simply that Hornell and Byrne Murdoch went to Antwerp with MacGeorge. I know that Hornell's sister Elizabeth married William Mouncey, who was born at Kakubri in 1852 and who died in 1901. Beyond this, I'm happy to go along with Crockett's fictional story. The rest of the mystery is up to you to discover by reading the book.